Welcome to another episode of OT Time. My name's Anthony. I'm your occupational therapist here at ICANN. Today we're going to be talking about a somewhat mysterious aspect of OT called sensory integration. And if you've been around OT, especially with kiddos, you've probably heard of sensory integration and thought like, what are you talking about? Sensory seeking, sensory avoiding, input. What does all this stuff mean? Well, I'm going to do my best today to break some of it down for you, okay? So the first thing that we're going to talk about is kiddos who are over responsive to sensory input. They are what we would call sensory avoiding. So examples of this would be kiddos getting upset at getting their fingernails clipped or their hair cut or certain types of foods or lights flickering. The opposite of that would be under responsive to sensory input and they would be sensory seeking kiddos. Uh, that would mean that, that means that their sensory systems have habituated to certain types of input and that they just need more of it to register it within their bodies. So examples of this could be <clears throat> kiddos that really like spinning in circles or roughhousing with other kids who don't want them to roughhouse with them. And sometimes it's important to know as well that sometimes repetitive and ritualistic behaviors are driven by sensory needs and then sometimes they just serve another function as well. And so next we're going to talk about the two different types of in main types of input that we uh, deal with here in OT. That the first one is proprioception. That's a long word and we're going to break it down. So that's the sense of yourself in the movement of your body and your body's position. There's actually neurons within all of your muscles and joints that send feedback directly to your brain about what's going on and where they're at. That's pretty sweet. The next one is vestibular input. And there's actually nerves and within our ears that send this input. And it's info about the motion and of head position and spatial orientation. Uh, and it also helps to facilitate things like motor functions of keeping our balance, stabilizing our head and our body during movement and maintaining posture. So what do I do now, now that I know all this stuff and about the sensory inputs and what's going on? Well, we're going to talk about some strategies for facilitating that next time on OT time. Thank you for joining me.